The price of cooperation. Everybody must pay it. Amen? Yes. Glory to God. Would you grab your swords this morning? Are you refreshed? Thank God you're not refleshed. <laughs> In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, we need a revelation. The book of Revelation, chapter 1. Good morning, good morning for training for reigning soldiers of the Most High. This is a training session, not some kind of Bible study. Although we use the Bible for the training manual. We are not religious, we are free. We are armed and dangerous and warriors of the Most High. And the enemy should fear you. Hello? They should fear you. If you fear the enemy, something ain't right. Because <laughs> the word says he who's in you is greater than he is in the world. That means there's a disconnect somewhere. Hallelujah. In verse 4, is everybody there? Let's speak it. First, uh, chapter 1, Revelations, verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you in peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, a faithful witness. Everyone say faithful witness. The firstborn from the dead. Hello, there was nobody else that was firstborn from the dead. You got a lot of imitators out there, but they ain't the firstborn from the dead. In fact, they're still stinking dead. And a ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. You know, he made his own blood. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, his God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come the Almighty God. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness. He was the firstborn from the dead. He was the risen Christ. He's a ruler. He washed us not only with his blood, but his blood sacrifice, his own blood sacrifice. Amen. Cleansing us from the sin, making us priests and kings and warriors of the eternal kingdom in a temporary realm. He made us kings and priests, but you first fulfill priesthood before you can become a warrior. Now, here's a kicker. He is the creator of time, the holder of time, and the beginning and the end of creation in this time until all is fulfilled to be released into a timeless realm. No other kingdom is eternal. Many counterfeits with false doctrines and promises that end up into eternal darkness but none of them end up into eternal light. He is not only the creator of time, the master of time, and the holder of time. He is time itself. Is everybody okay? He is time. That's why the word says we live and have our being in him. There are areas where we are involved in and sometimes encounter. They're called timeless moments. Timeless moments. And in these timeless moments, there is transitions and changes. Everybody has a timeless moment. 
at some time. And God's trying to bring more of these moments in our life. It's a transition. It's an exchange. He prepares us many times for a timeless moment. In Acts 17... Well, the timeless moment is an area where there is no time involved. It's a moment of timelessness. Is everybody okay? We didn't run out yet, so cool. Acts 17. <laughs> In verse 22, it's going to take wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and discernment to receive what the Holy Spirit is releasing today. He's trying to bring us into a timeless moment. Hallelujah. In verse 22, then Paul stood in the midst of Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive in all things that you are very religious. For as I was passing through the, and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing, him I will proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven. Now, I want you to look at heaven not just in his eternal kingdom. So many times we hear words over and over and over and we just take them and, yeah. Heaven is timeless. Eternal is timeless. It's timeless. Totally timeless. God who made the world and everything in it since he is Lord of timeless the realm of timeless, and earth, which is bound by time. Does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he is made from one blood. Everyone is from one blood. Doesn't matter what your skin color is, you're still from one blood. Every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their what? Pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings. Wow. So the Lord has pre-appointed moments of timelessness and boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grow for him or find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and we move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are, the, uh, are also his what? We are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by heart or man's devising. Surely these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Turn, repent. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance to this to all by raising him from the dead. And when they heard the of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, while others said, well, we'll hear you again in this matter. So we see here that God Almighty, known as the Lord of the temporary, but he is the timeless God. He's the Lord of the temporary time and the eternal time, what we call time or timeless realms. He made for one blood all humanity and set in a pre-appointed events and locations of visitations that humanity, his own creation, might seek him and know him, serve him, love him, and be restored back to him. Since their separation of sin, 
The word says that sin separated man from God. So when sin came into effect, so did timelessness. Does everybody understand? There was no longer eternity to a man. You had to turn away. That's why he says repent. Remember, to be timeless means eternal. Eternal means timeless. So when sin entered mankind, entered humanity, it separated man from eternity or from a timeless realm. And he was bound by time. Does everybody get it? So in this world that we see now, it's bound by time. Remember, Adam and Eve were made eternal until sin came. Then they, be, they lost eternity. Is everybody okay? So then, as timeless offsprings, everyone say, I'm a timeless offspring. We will follow our timeless father. Amen? Because he's timeless. He's not bound by anything. He is, he was, and always will be. And what we are going to do to make it home, we have to avoid the traps of sin that bring us back into a time realm. A divine nature is a timeless nature. It's a character of justice and righteousness that is required to enter the eternal port to get home. If there are not fruits of righteousness and justice, you've surrendered your right to enter that port. Is everybody okay? In Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. In verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the what? The government will be upon his shoulder. So he's got a government. If you got a government, you got a kingdom. And his name will be called what? Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting means timeless Father. Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be what? No end, because he's a timeless father. He's a timeless king. Time doesn't hold him. And his kingdom is timeless. It's forever and ever and ever. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with what? Judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal the Lord has of hosts will perform this. Again, we serve a timeless kingdom. There is no end to this kingdom. None. It will never, never end. That must become a reality to us. It will never end. So the enemy wants to ensnare us as much as he can to entrap us into the time realm here so that, because one day it's going to collapse. And when this time collapses, he wants to make sure that you're caught in it. Does everybody get it? And there's only one way out, and that's through Christ Jesus. In Romans 12. Uh, let's go to Luke 11 first. Luke. I had a timeless moment in 1993, April 15th, 2.15 p.m. It was a timeless moment. In that timeless moment, I was transfigured. <laughs> I was changed. Every part of my body was healed. I had no sickness, no illness. Everything was totally healed instantly. All pains, everything gone. 
addiction gone, demons gone, everything gone. When I came out of that timeless moment, I walked into the realm of time, but I was still carrying a timeless spirit. It's called the Holy Spirit. He connected me to the timeless realm, and he still connects us to the timeless realm. So he wants to do is constantly feed us from that realm all the time so we stay connected. So what it, in that timeless moment, we maintain that moment. Does everybody understand? And then we go from glory to glory. That's moment to moment. As he prepares for another moment. But sometimes the enemy gets people so busy and caught up in everything else, they miss it. Because their hearts are not set towards heaven. Their thoughts are not set towards eternal. Their thoughts are caught up in temporary. How much can I work? How much can I do this? How much money can I save? How much can I? It's all about me, me, and me. Instead of him, him, and him. Is everybody okay? In Luke 4, verse 17. I said 11? Okay, can I change it? Thank you. Luke 4. <laughs> hey, I was caught up in a timeless moment. <laughs> Woohoo! Luke 4. We'll go back in time. We'll go from 11 to 4. Remember, we're timeless. We can go anywhere we want. Hallelujah. That's what I told you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Luke 4, 17. Let's speak it. And Jesus was handed the book of the prophet, of the prophet who? Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now, wait a minute. The spirit of the Lord is the timeless connector. Amen. Because he's anointed me. To do what? To preach the gospel or the message of the truth to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom or liberty to the captives, and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who have been oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And when Jesus... Uh, and he closed the book and he gave it back to the attendant and sat down and his eye, all the eyes were fixed upon him. And, and he said to them, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Well, everybody freaked out. Because for them it was hard to comprehend that the son of Joseph or the son of Mary was the Messiah. He was God in the physical they had a hard time getting this. See, even though they knew the scriptures, they didn't know the word. Mm. See, there are men of scriptures and men of the word. There's a lot of people that quote scriptures, but the word isn't alive in them. They couldn't quote all the scriptures from left and right, but still not obey them. They still can't follow them. They can't manifest the scriptures. They're a bunch of talkers and not walkers. Is everybody okay? The spirit of timelessness, the creator and the father of those willing to accept this truth would be available as a promise to, to seal and reconnect each and every human being willing to the timeless kingdom. We would become witnesses of his presence and power and truth to rescue those imprisoned by time and captive by sin. I'm going to say that again. To rescue those imprisoned by time and captive to sin. They are also blinded by the goddess of, uh, God of this age. <laughs> and time. That is, in this God rejected the one, ruler of this world who's the God of this age, who was one time timeless, who is now bound by time and knows he has a short time. 
Does everybody got it? <laughs> Revelation 12. The baptism of the Holy Spirit becomes a timeless moment. That's where timeless invades time. In Revelation chapter 12 and verse 10. Hallelujah. Revelation 12, 10. Remember, Jesus said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. God is trying to bring us to another revelation of an impartation so that things become revived. See, revival is a point of reviving things, refreshing, reconnecting, coming out of a lukewarm state into a fire. Remember, he says, I'm going to spit out anyone that's lukewarm. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation 12, verse 10. Let's speak it. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before him day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Woe means without eternity. To the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. Why? Because he knows it is a what? Short time. So he knows that when his time comes complete, he wants to take as many out as he can with him. There is no redemption for demons or devils or Satan or Lucifer. There is no redemption. There is no redemption for fallen angels. There is no redemption. The power of Christ, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, which we call the anointing. From timeless realm to overcome the presence of evil influence that attempts to keep humanity from entering the timeless realm. In Genesis 18. In verse 1. So the divine nature is timeless. So you got to ask yourself, how do you act timeless? Nothing bothers you. Does everybody get it? Nothing bothers you. So what? <laughs> Does everybody get this? <laughs> that's where the word says, those who worry, fear, anxiety, stress, that's all bothersome. So you don't fall in the state of fear, anxiety, stress, or worry. All things are going to work to the good, no matter what. Why? Because you're timeless, and his word is timeless, but his word is manifested from a timeless realm into a temporary realm to cause a timeless moment. Oh, eat that one. Genesis 18, verse 1. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth of trees of Marah as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. This was Abram. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have, known, have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your, your heart, your, your uh, yeah, right, refresh your hearts. 
After that you may pass by inasmuch as you have come to your servant. They said, do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes. See, you didn't think they had instant stuff there? And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them, and he stood by them under the tree, and they ate. And they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, Here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of what? Life. So he just exposed himself as timeless. Who was it? It was the Lord. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door which was behind him. Now Abram and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself. In other words, she thought it. Saying, after I have grown older, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, <laughs> my Lord being so old? And the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? But she didn't laugh, did she? She thought it. <laughs> He's the only one that can read your mind. Uh, he can read your mind, amen? He knows the intents of your heart. How many of y'all know the devil can also read your mind? Amen. He's a spirit. All oh, glory. And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? No. At the what? Appointed time. It was a timeless moment. I will return to you. According to the time of life and Sarah shall have a son but Sarah denied it saying I did not laugh for she was afraid and, and he said no but you did laugh <laughs> and then the men arose and they left amen now listen this is so powerful because in this what happened the Lord visits in a timeless moment when he shows up, all time separates, stands back. And there's a moment. Remember Moses. Think about this. When the Lord called Moses up to the mountain, it says that he was with the Lord for 40 days and 40 nights and neither drank or ate. Moses went in there, talked to the Lord for five minutes and left. It was 40 days later to the world. But to Moses, it was timeless. There was no time taken or lost. Amen? And many people's visitations, they come back, and they go, man, I, you know, I fell asleep for two minutes, but it was like I lived a whole life. Think about your dreams. Your dreams sometimes become almost in an area of timeless. Then you wake up, and it was like, whoa. Whoa. I just did a whole thing. I could have took him for years or whatever, you know. So in that realm of timelessness, God is trying to bring moments of timelessness for me and you. And he's trying to bring us to the reality of who we really are. So easily move. So easily influenced. So easily offended. So easily rejected. So easily believe the lie in the time realm of the powers of darkness to keep us bound here when we're supposed to be living from the future to the present, not from the past. You can't change what you've done. Amen? But you can change what you're going to do. Hallelujah. John chapter 1. Now, when the Lord does visit or he brings a, a, a timeless moment, 
The first thing that begins to happen is the devil tries to come and discredit it. He tries to steal it. In John chapter 1 and verse 1. Let's speak it together. In the, in the beginning. That's time, isn't it? But where there's a beginning, there's an end. That means it's not timeless. It's just a time. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness. Now, I want you to grab this because timeless will shine in a realm of darkness. Because in the end result, those who are caught up in bound by time because they've been taken captive by sin, end up in darkness. And it is eternal because it's a moment of time, the constant of tormenting time that repeats itself. Does everybody grab hold of it? Hell is a moment of time that repeats itself. That's why people are in torment constantly. It just constantly repeats itself because there is no advancement in time. Verse 5, and the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not what? It did not comprehend it. In verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the timeless word of creation became time to bring life, light, and truth. To escape those willing, giving, uh, giving an opportunity to escape those willing to turn from the influence of the time of sin and captivity to a timeless Savior, King, Father, and Kingdom. So many things, you know, Holy Spirit was talking to me the other day and something came ar around because there was something I was trying to look at and... He shared with me about offsprings. And, and again, there are, there are offsprings in the area to where we want to become offsprings of the anointing. And we want to stay in that condition. See, because offsprings of the anointing are connected to the timeless realm. And too many people are swayed in that they fall back. Because they become, and now don't, don't freak out on me. Because they become offsprings of scripture or what we call savior. Does everybody understand that? So their, their whole focus is on I'm saved. That's that. And they don't, they're not in, so their whole focus in the area is, okay, I'm saved. I'm saved this one time. That's all I need to do. And now I can go do whatever I want. That's not an offspring of the anointing. Actually, it's an offspring of deception and religion. Remember, Jesus even said to him, you search the scriptures thinking you have salvation, but you won't come to me to get it. See, there's a place of cooperation. That's why the word says you must work out your own salvation. It's not about knowledge. It's not about how much you know. It's about who you know. And many of them are going to go before him and he's going to say, I don't know you. Thinking that they know him when he says, I don't know you because you practice lawlessness. See, the Bible is a timeless book. It's written to get people and give them an understanding of a timeless realm. So as they eat the word of God, they maintain a place and position as a timeless being. 
but you must obey what it says. The word, your words must be exchanged with his. Your life must be exchanged for his. Everything, there must be a place of exchange. That's what the cross did. It was a place of exchange. Jesus came into the temporary realm to give us access and a life in the eternal realm or the timeless realm. Is everybody okay? In John chapter 5. Hallelujah. In verse 24. John 5, verse 24. Jesus, most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my words and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. Is that a timeless life? Yes. And shall not come into judgment, but pass from death to life. Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of the life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing as I hear I judge and my judgment is righteous because I do not seek my own will but the will of the Father who sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. You have sent to John, and he has borne witness of the truth. Yet I do not receive testimony from man, but I say these things that you may be saved. He was the burning and shining lamp, and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than John's for the works which the Father has given me to finish the very works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. But you do not have his word abiding you because whom he sent him you do not believe. You search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. But you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. Again, knowing the scriptures, but not the word. Hmm. They are offsprings of the scriptures, not offsprings of the anointing. They, God is trying to bring them to a timeless moment, but they keep rejecting it. Stiff neck and stubborn. Hello. In 1 Peter chapter 2. Everybody okay? First Pete chapter 2. And verse 1. Therefore laying aside all what? Malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living cornerstone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, 
You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, the elect precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe is precious, but to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling, the rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word, to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So we need to begin to look at darkness as captivity of time. Amen? It's, a, it's an imprisonment of time. Who once were not a people of God, but now a people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of what? In the day of what? Visitation. That's a timeless moment. Oh, hallelujah. Call out of darkness a place where <laughs> there is no escape. Amen? Only Jesus can bring you out. But there's an eternal place where even Jesus can't bring you out. Does everybody understand it? Eternal place of darkness. It's called hell. Everyone in there now believes. There's not one unbeliever that's not in hell. Amen? They, are, they, they believe now, don't they? But they can't get out. It's an imprisonment forever. You and I were imprisoned in darkness here. But through Christ Jesus, we were able to get out. Because for me and you, there is a time. At the end of the time, that it's time to give up your spirit. Amen? When it's time to give up your spirit, you're either connected to a timeless realm or a temporary or a darkness realm the realm of light or the realm of darkness, either way. So what you do now is recorded. Everything is building, being built up eternally or everything is being built up in hell. Again, hell is a location where there is no time advancement. The moment of time of torment constantly repeats itself. There's no advancement. If you ever heard of anyone going to hell, they can tell you. People are eating their own flesh constantly as the flesh burns off of their bodies. And they find that they're eating their own flesh again. Why? Because these were individuals that were blood drinkers. Human eaters. Cannibalistic. Now they eat their own flesh forever. People that have been in hell, there's a lot of testimonies people have been in hell. And that moment of torment constantly repeats itself and never leaves. Is everybody okay? <laughs> you want to stay connected, amen? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Let's go to uh, somewhere. So you and I have been called out of darkness and... Uh, we are timeless. We are a timeless generation with no limitations of justice and righteousness. Constant. We want to keep expressing justice and righteousness in everything we do. Luke 19. <laughs> Hallelujah. In a timeless moment... <laughs> Even revelation can come in a timeless moment. God can download in you, poof! Whoa! Sometimes when he downloads in me, even like today's teaching, when he downloads it, it's so understandable and beautiful. But to try to express it makes it difficult sometimes. 
It's like, how do you, how do you talk about a timeless moment? You, you can't even express it. You have to experience it. But I hope that people will come to a thirst and hunger and a reality to want a timeless moment, a visitation, seek it, get revelation, and be prepared, because God prepares us for these things also. And um, Luke 19, verse 41. It says, now as Jesus drew near, he saw the city and wept over it and saying, if you had known, even you especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes, for the days will come upon you. Why were they hidden from their eyes? Because they kept rejecting. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you, surround you, and close you in on every side. Now, I want you to think about this because that's what time is going to eventually do to those who are not connected to the timeless realm. It's going to come in and collapse on every side. And level you and your children within you to the ground and they will not leave you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of what? Your visitation. Then he went into the temple and began to drive out those who bought and sold in it, saying, It is written, My house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Again, Jesus was expressing about our temples. Many have made them a den of thieves. He said, You've null disqualified yourself for the timeless realm because you keep missing my visitation or rejecting the arena where I'm trying to set you up for a visitation of a timeless moment. And he loves to visit us. He loves to. It's his desire. It's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. But it's sin. It's attitude. It's all of these things that keep us separated from him. It's our mouth. It's our thoughts. It's our heart. Does everybody understand? These things keep us separated from him. That's why he says, who can stand in the presence of God or who can come to his holy hill but he has a pure heart and clean hands? Luke for, uh, Leviticus 23. A couple more scriptures. Leviticus 23. Timeless moments. In verse 4, Leviticus 23, These are the feasts of the Lord, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. On the fourteenth day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. On the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread to the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. But you shall, uh, you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord with se for seven days. And the seventh day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. Now, these are called the feasts of the Lord. The reason why they are called the feasts of the Lord because they're his feasts. These are preparations for timeless moments, visitations. They celebrated them in the Old Covenant in the Old Testament. They celebrated these things. But in the New Covenant, the New Testament, God fulfills them. So we know that the Feast of Passover was fulfilled. Jesus died on the cross. Amen? From the cross, he went right to hell, took the keys of death, hell, and the grave away from Lucifer or Satan. That was a feast of unleavened bread because the word leaven means evil. And then he rose again on the third day, meaning first fruits, which we call resurrection. It's not the fertility day of a rabbit with eggs. Hello. We don't chase eggs. We chase Jesus. Hallelujah. In this, God in the Old Testament was foretelling the future events of the things that would occur. And he's already fulfilled all of these events, including Pentecost. 
So you got Passover, Feast of Unleavened, First Fruits, and Pentecost, which was a time of visitation. Those were timeless moments. Jesus fulfilled them. The next feast is the Feast of Trumpets. And in that feast, we will be removed from the earth. Then there's a Feast of Atonement, which will be the final war. Then there'll be the Feast of Tabernacle, where we'll set up the kingdom of the timeless realm in this realm for a period of time, a thousand years. So in that, we celebrate these feasts. We acknowledge them as moments of timelessness. In Philippians chapter 2, Hallelujah. I truly believe Jesus was birthed on the Feast of Trumpets and conceived on Christmas Day. Because everything has to be coordinated with the feast. But they have a pagan God that was born on the day Jesus was conceived. Because see, the G Jews look at birth as the day of conception. Does everybody get it? Jesus was conceived in December, but birth was over in September. Is everybody okay? Amen. So I believe that right now, or in this feast, the Feast of Trumpets is when I personally believe he, he, he was come forth. Because it's the day he came and it's the day we're leaving. Hallelujah. In Philippians chapter 2, but we celebrate his conception, or what they call his birth, on December 25th, which was also a pagan ritual. But we don't celebrate pagans. In verse 5, is everybody okay? Let's speak it. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Every knee should bow, and those in heaven, and those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Now that's powerful. He humbled himself to the point of death on the cross. A timeless creator took off the robe of timelessness and put on a robe of time. Does everybody get it? To sacrifice himself with the shedding of his own timeless blood making the exchange for mankind to escape the corruption of time while restoring his timeless position. Oh, awesome. Eat that one too. Matthew 27. <laughs> Woohoo! Matthew 27. Shedding his timeless blood, making the exchange from, for mankind to escape the corruption of time while restoring his own timeless position. Matthew 27, 50. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split. <coughs> Something occurred here. And it says the graves were open, and many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. This is where the collision of time manifested. 
in this collision of time, it opened up an eternal port. Does everybody understand that? This collision of time and timelessness opened up a port for you and I to escape. This had to happen. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Snap. There's grandma. Can you imagine seeing some of your kids that were killed in an accident come home? Now, the only ones that rose from the dead at this time that appeared were the ones that were accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior associated with his ministry. None of the other ones rose from the dead only at that time of Jesus' time here in the short time of his ministry. Those are the ones that rose from the dead. Is everybody okay? And they went into the city again. The collision of time manifested and resulted in an opening of a timeless port or a portal called the way, truth, and life. Um, I don't know if I can put this into words, but see, we're so accustomed to looking at things physically, tangibly. Um, I, I'm going to use this. For, think of the matrix. I mean, when they saw the things in the matrix, it was all of these numbers and binaries and electricity and Whatever, it's the same thing. So in this, when, when, when time collided, timeless with time collided, it opened up this eternal portal so that you and I could be changed and go home. The word says that there is no marriage home, that we become angelic. Amen? See, but we're so caught up what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, what we feel, what in this realm, uh, imprisoned in time and, and many captive by sin, that we're constantly, that's why the word says we had grown within trying to get out of here. But we don't even know it. And that's why people use drugs and alcohol and all the other stuff and watch, because they're trying to escape and not know it. They're looking for a fulfillment. Then they're going to be fulfilled by knowing you have access to the eternal portal. In Revelation 20. Again, after my visitation from the Lord, everything to me was temporary. Everything. I would lean against a tree and say, you're temporary. Everything was temporary. Everything I looked at was temporary. I, because you, you would look through everything. Everything, you just look right through it. Because it's all just temporary. And I believe God is trying to bring us to a place where things are more timeless for us. More eternal. And I believe we're getting closer and closer. That's why, too. In verse 1, Revelation 20. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him to the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after that, these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they that sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness of Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him 
for a thousand years. Wow. First Corinthians 15. First Corinthians 15. What does the word say? Be anxious for nothing. Amen? But in all prayer and supplication. Prayer and supplication means connect. And let your request be made known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. See, because there's a place of peace, man, when you know it just doesn't matter. So what? Okay, let's just live. You know, the Lord said to me the other day, he said, there are those who are world uh, seers of the world, and then there are those who are saviors of the world. See, there's a lot of people that want to see the world, but there's not a people who want to save it. And it's not about saving the world, it's about saving mankind. There's a difference. I talk to a lot of people, they want to see the world. Well, the world's going to burn up. Better take pictures while you can. But you can't bring those pictures home, so what does it matter? Amen? 1 Corinthians 15, 50. woo -hoo! Eternal moments. I mean, uh, timeless moments. Whatever it is. What did I say this was? Timeless moments, yes. <laughs> See, just time flew. <laughs> In verse 50, let's speak it together. Hallelujah. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a what? In a moment. It's a timeless moment. In a twinkling of an eye. At the last trumpet, or the feast of trumpets. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where, or hell, where is your victory? The sting of death is what? Sin. And the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed in a timeless moment. Amen? It's coming. Get ready. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. And we thank you for the price of Jesus, the eternal one, who made an exchange for each and every one of us that we may enter the eternal port as the way, truth, and life and go home and get out of this time of corruption and captivity of sin. Thank you, Jesus. Nobody said amen.